Political art has been around for generations, but this election, it's got a new spin. Younger artists and designers have come out and remade or remixed images of Senator Barack Obama on posters, T-shirts, and billboards. Take Justin Bua. His fine art posters and illustrations show the beauty and struggle of life in the cities. His work is collected in a book called The Beat of Urban Art. He's also taken a foray into political illustration. Bua, it's great to have you here. Great to be here. So you're somebody who you can find your art in so many different places, on people's walls, on T-shirts. You know, um, you're someone who has kind of come up out of the 80s hip hop scene and, and, you know, made a life for yourself, not only as an artist, but an entrepreneur. A lot of times I end up describing things, um, but you in your book have this you know, you have so many different illustrations, and I want you to describe one of them. So I wonder if you can crack open your own book and describe sure. your piece, Rising, to us. Uh, you know, Rising is really a painting about the about rising above the insurmountable stigma of the projects. Mm -hmm. You know, really, where onlookers sneer, and there's a lot of player haters. You know, there's really only one way to rise above the stigma and that is in this case through basketball and that came from my experiences uh, playing ball and hanging out at the Douglas and Dykeman projects and just you know knowing that a lot of these brothers thought that this was the only way out and the only way that they knew you know otherwise it was selling drugs or hustling. So um, how did you choose to depict that? Uh, you know I, I showed it from an anti point of view or a knock down on your butt perspective uh, I wanted to really show how dramatic it was and, and theatrical it was, and it is, you know. And, and playing ball in the projects is no joke because there's no rules. <laughs> this has this incredible sort of blue um, swirl in the middle that's actually mm -hmm. the um, – it's it's the basketball pole, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the – you know, so that's, that's something that really fascinated me is that you, you take – life and you bend it a little bit well you know it's skewed and and uh, I did a very classical s curve of the basket uh, which is a very renaissance technique and it, it all revolves around two c curves which is an s curve and then I saw it later on in a, in a Michael Jordan commercial and I was like I know they bit my stuff <laughs> I came up with that first so uh, and I also wanted to show you know that there were you know the city is very claustrophobic in terms of the undulating terracotta it's everywhere and I, I wanted to feel like it was closed in and there was only a sluice of sky that we could see because you know as a kid in New York that's how sometimes you see the city you know you just see these gigantic um, architectural monuments and then and then there's just a little bit of sky which kind of in this case represents a little bit of hope all right. Well, speaking of hope, someone named Shepard Ferry has uh, he did an Obama poster with the word hope at the bottom and mm -hmm. it's become viral. But you've also got an Obama poster and I want you to to grab it off the table um, and describe describe for us what you see in your own work and how you chose to depict Barack Obama. Well, you know, Shepard jumped on the train really early, you know, and, and it, it was really cool. And I think he inspired a lot of artists to kind of get involved. And, and Shepard was actually the one that asked me to be involved in the Manifest Hope Gallery that they were having in conjunction with the DNC. Uh, so and I that did, was an exhibit that was of different artists kind of doing this, um, different, the visuals that were related to Senator Obama and that's politics. That's right. Different uh, iterations and paintings of, of Senator Obama. Ron English did one of him as kind of morphing into Abe Lincoln. You know, Shepard's hope thing, you know, was it was enormous. Uh, you know, I did one of, of Obama looking uh, obviously very hopeful uh, into, into the city. He's b behind him is a cityscape, and rising is the sun. I wanted it to be during, you know, the sunrise. And so he's being backlit by the sun, uh, in warm light, and the reason I did the city is because, you know, he's from the city. He can relate to the city. You know, he's raised by a single mom on food stamps, and it, which is uh, much like my experience growing up in, up in Harlem. And, you know, he's, and I said, I wrote one on it because he's really, he really represents one, you know, one global community, uh, ethnically diverse, one nation, and really someone that we can, for the first time, being from urban life, relate to, besides Clinton, by the way.
Are you worried about there being an element of hero worship to this? I mean, um, both in the, the fact that so many artists are depicting him, but also in the way that he's depicted. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not worried about it. Uh, I think there is a lot of hero worship, but uh, in contrast to, to what's out there, you know, I, he is a hero. <laughs> you know, I think that uh, I haven't been so inspired to do anything and get so involved since, since, since Clinton, you know, when I was working grassroots for that campaign. Uh, and for this, you know, I, I've always kept my work uh, about hip hop and jazz and the urban experience. My work is really about celebrating urban life. And to me, Obama represents that. He really does celebrate urban life. And he's someone that's very relatable. You have this beautiful picture in your book um, about a jazz quartet or kin, uh, quintet. quintet. Yeah. Um, and um, although you're dealing with a hip hop sensibility, you also, it's easy to see how it relates to a jazz and blues sensibility. Why did you do uh, that work? Well, you know, I think jazz is very much like hip-hop. It's very improvisational. Uh, hip-hop is, you know, improvisational. They're both from the streets. You know, jazz originated on the streets. Hip-hop originated on the streets. So they both have the same origins. And, uh, you know, sim people always ask me, why do you paint jazz? And simply I say the same thing, because it's cool. Why do you paint hip-hop? Because it's cool. You know, it, it has the savoir faire of the inner city. And that's what my work is, is really about. When you think, and, and this is not an art question, when you think about some of the communities that you're depicting, some of the, the urban communities that where people may not be hopeful about either life or politics, do you think people are really going to turn out and vote? Do you think people are going to be able to transcend the disappointments of daily life and um, get themselves to the polls? Or do you think that they're still cynical, a lot of people? Well, doing some grassroots passing out of my own poster, you know, I think that there are a lot of cynical people out there. Uh, but that being said, uh, I think the reason that I did this is because I do sell more posters than any other living artist. And I, I did these posters and I'm putting them out there for free for the people. And that I'm doing that because I have the expectation that people are actually going to come out and come to the polls because the propaganda on MTV... I think a lot of those kids don't buy into it. They feel like, you know, MTV is just a machine. And, and cer certainly the slippery, serpentine, silver-tongued politicians they don't buy into. So I was hoping that, you know, by getting my work out there, that it would bring some kind of authenticity to that demo, the younger demo. You know, the 18 to 24-year-old kids who are like, okay, well, you know, Boo is representing, Boo supports him. Maybe this is important. Let me look into it more. Shepard Ferry supporting him. Let me look into it more. So that, you know, people who don't feel like they can make a, a change are really out of their mind. You know, but you, you'd be surprised. I run into kids who are like, well, I'm an anarchist, man. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, you're delusional. You really need to do something. Okay, stop, <laughs> stop getting high just for a little bit and go to the polls and vote. Stay vote. stay straight for eight hours and go right. ahead and vote. All right, on that note, Bua, thanks so All much. Right. All right, thank you so much.